in the last session we dis we started discussing about inter process communication methods so there we discussed about uh, one important method that is message queue okay so in the message queue we discussed uh, what are the different methods or ip apis used for sending the messages okay so message send function message control function and message receive function so today we will discuss about semaphores okay so semaphores is a counter used to provide access to a shared data object for multiple process so this is also a one of the method for communication between the process okay so here what we do is we have a uh, data structure where we keep the shared data so this data can be shared by multiple process okay so they can exchange the data by using this shared data object so to obtain shared resources a process need to do the following thing okay so to exchange the data among the process process need to do few things okay. so there are the three points we will be discussing so the first thing is test the semaphores that controls the resource okay so here we need to know that uh, this uh, the semaphores that is inter process communication method has all the control over the resources so it may be the process may be uh, may need to access to a file or it may need to access to a memory location or any type of resources make sure that this inter process communication method has access to all the resources that might be necessary for exchanging between the process okay the next point is if the value of the semaphores is positive okay so if the semaphores returns positive value then the process can use the resources okay positive value means yes everything is fine the process can start using the resources in case okay ma'am yeah the slide is not visible ma'am okay now now is this fine yes ma'am okay so we were discussing about the semaphores okay so semaphores is a process okay in inter process communication method where we will be using the shared data which can be used by multiple process okay so what the process must do the first thing is test the semaphores that it, whether it have access to all the resources if it has access to all the resources then it returns a positive value it returns positive value okay then the process decrement the semaphores value by 1 okay every time it decrements the value by 1 indicating that it has used one unit of the resource okay a certain process for example if i have a uh, five process every five process will be allotted with the amount of resource it can use okay. amount of units of resource it can use for example five unit of resource okay maximum for example if p is a process uh, uh, p can use only five unit of resource every time when it make use of this resource the value will start decrementing so initially 4 then 3 2 and 1 okay finally when it becomes zero okay when the value of the semaphores becomes zero process goes to sleep that means it will not have any access to the resource okay and it will be in the sleeping state until the semaphores value will become greater than zero okay so once the value becomes greater than zero then it will understand that as yes, it has the right to access the resource okay when the semaphores wake up it turns to step 1 okay again this procedure continues okay so these are the three steps uh, in the semaphores that is required uh, to obtain a shared resource for a process okay so sometimes they may ask you for three or four marks what are the steps required or what are the steps the process need to follow to share the resources okay so these are the steps so when the process is done with the shared resource that is controlled by the semaphores okay semaphores value is 
incremented by 1 okay after that what happens once it will get the value greater than 1 greater than 0 again the process okay the value will start increasing by 1 So there are different types of semaphores. So here uh, we'll be discussing two types of semaphores. One is binary semaphores, and another one is a system V semaphores. Okay. So these are the two types of semaphores we are going to discuss. So the most common form of semaphores is binary semaphores. Okay. So what is this binary semaphores? So in the binary semaphores, it controls a single resource. Okay. So its value is initialized to 1. So here it will have how many resource? It will have a control on only a single resource. Okay. So okay. So this is a type of semaphores. Next one is okay. So in general, however, the semaphores can be initialized to any positive value. Okay, in generally it can be initialized to any positive value. Here I have said five units. Okay, like that it can be assigned with any number of units of resources, which will indicate how many units of shared resources can be available for the uh, for sharing. Okay. Next type of semaphores is uh, system V semaphores. Okay. So it is actually it's the most complicated form of a semaphores. Okay. So three features contribute to this unnecessary complications. Okay. What are the features that we have under the system V semaphores? Okay. These are the three points under system V semaphores. So three features. The first one is semaphores is not, not simply a single non-negative value. So it does not have just a simple positive value. Okay. When we create a semaphores, it will specify the number of values in the set. Okay. So in binary, we said that it will be having only one initial value. I mean, you know, how many units of resource it can use, only that value it will be having. But here, we will not have just one single value, but instead we will be having number of values. Okay. So there will be... Okay. Uh, there will be a set of one or more semaphores values. Okay, we will see what are the values later. Okay. Next, the creation of semaphores. Okay. So if you want to create a semaphores, we need this function. So this is a function which we will discuss later. Okay. It is independent of its initialization. Okay. So for to get the semaphores, we will be using this function. And for initialization of the semaphores, that means we are having number of values, right? So that values to be initialized, we will be using this function. Okay. Similar to your message queue. So in the message queue, we have used control, receive, and send functions, right? Same way here also, we will be having different functions. Okay. So here, okay, so these are the two important functions that is required. Since all form of system V ITC remains in existence even when no process is using them. Okay, so whatever the inter-process communication, okay, the, uh, 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 the functions, the whatever the semaphores we have created okay, for the communication between the process, that remains in the system okay, when, uh, when a certain process deletes it. Okay. So, so we have to worry about the program so we need to think, okay, what program can be used that terminates without realizing that semaphores it has been allotted. Okay, we need to think, okay, once it is allotted programmatically, you have to write the program for deleting the unused semaphores, which is not necessary anymore for the communication between the process. Okay, the undo feature that we described later, okay, is used for handling this deletion or termination of the unused semaphores. Okay. So these are the three points. First thing is, in binary, we have only one value in binary semaphores, whereas in system V semaphores, we will be having number of values. Next, we need several functions for creating and initializing of the semaphores. 
next we have to think how to delete the unused uh, semaphores okay, once the task is done so these are the three things we need to take care in system with semaphores okay next similarly uh, i mean we have discussed about um, message queue data structure or structure here kernel also maintains a structure for each semaphores so we said that for communicating between the process we can have any number of semaphores okay so each of the semaphores will be making use of this structure which is a built in structure okay so who will maintain the structure this structure is maintained by the kernel unix kernel okay will be maintaining this structure okay so what are things we have in the structure so we have uh, this uh, uh, again one more structure that is sem underscore permission okay so sem underscore permission here that is meant uh, that is used for uh, here okay this is for permissions okay. so this is for the structure it will have all the initialization of the permission that is affect user id real user id or any uh, mode of communication everything is there in this permission structure next we have one more structure uh, that is sem underscore base okay it's a pointer to the first semaphores in the set so we can have between the process we can have any number of semaphores okay so the first semaphores will be having this pointer okay next unassigned sign short sem and semaphores so this is a uh, a member in the structure which will be having the number of semaphores in the set okay whether we are having two semaphores three semaphores how many semaphores we are having so this is giving the number of semaphores in the set next again we have two uh, time members okay so this time members will be having uh, two things one is uh, the last semaphores time okay or last change time Okay, so these two things are for uh, maintaining the time informations so here this is a pointer as i said it will be pointing to the uh, memory in the kernel okay memory in the kernel okay, we said that in the semaphores we are using shared memory correct the process will be using some shared data so this pointer will be pointing to the memory of the kernel memory in the kernel okay kernel which is used for sharing the data okay so this memory in the kernel can be is pointed by this pointer okay pointer which can be used by multiple process for communication next next we have one more structure here okay so that is an array of sem structure containing okay n sem that is this one okay sem n sem okay, elements one element in the array for each semaphores values in the set for for each semaphores in the set we said there are can be a number of semaphores in the set for each semaphores in the structure will be maintaining this structure okay again this is one more structure okay. so you can see here what are the things we have in this structure we have sem value okay sem value is the semaphores value so we can say that one semaphores can, can be having multiple values okay so here this sem value will be having semaphores value so always value should be greater than or equal to 0 okay next one is sem pid so pid is nothing but process id for the last operation okay next one is unsigned short okay uh, here it is this is the one more field that is uh, the process waiting awaiting okay for sem value greater than current value okay. 
there is one more that is last member here this is a process waiting for tongue value to be equal to zero okay so this is these are the different sector fields or members so let us start discussing about the functions okay so in the msq we have discussed different functions similarly here also will be uh, we will start we will be discussing different functions you may get the questions question like uh, explain semaphores and what are the functions we have in the semaphores for creating the function or for communication okay so the first function we are going to discuss is uh, function to call that is stem get semaphores get which is used to create or to obtain the semaphores id so previously we discussed in the message queue okay, just show you here so we have used this message get right this is all this is also used for creating the message queue and for getting the id okay it returns a non negative message queue id similarly here also we are using the function that is sem get okay so sem get is also used for getting semaphores id okay it is used for creating the semaphores once you create the semaphores this function will return the uh, semaphores id so it will return the semaphores id if everything is fine or it returns minus 1 on error okay. so this is a header file we are using sem.h okay there are two parameters one is t okay and next we have n sem okay number of semaphores and flag okay so uh, if you remember last session we discussed that uh, we need a key okay once we know the key okay every key will be converted into id by the kernel okay. so we uh, we have discussed described how the key will be converted into id correct if you remember we have i have shown you the steps to how to convert the key into id okay so we need to follow all that rules for converting the key into an identifier okay and so once okay one so here the key will be converted into id okay so when a new set is created the following members okay, when a new uh, semaphore is created a following members of this structure that is this vector okay the structure following members will be initialized so here what are the uh, things that is going to initialize first one is this okay so permission will be getting initialized so this is structure that is sem underscore permission so that permission field will be initialized so here in this permission field it will be having different permissions like real user permission or effect user permission mode that is a mode the member of the structure is set to the corresponding permission bit of the flag read mode or write mode so next we are going to set o time okay uh, and similarly we are going to set c time to the current time and n sem to the number of semaphores okay so n sem is nothing but the number of semaphores to be set how many semaphores for communicating between the process how many semaphores two or three or four semaphores how many semaphores have to create it? so that can be given here in the yen sim that is semaphores okay so so this is the first function for creating the semaphores okay so the next method that we are going to discuss is next function is semaphores control okay so this function is a catch all for various semaphores operation so this is used for performing different semaphores operations okay so here we have uh, different arguments okay the first thing is uh, the semaphores id so semaphores id will be returned by this function so first we have to execute this function so after executing this function we need, we will get an id so that id will be used as a first argument okay 
so this is the first argument which is nothing but the semaphorous id okay and apart from that this is the number of semaphores and we have some command which we will discuss later and again we have a union semaphores argument okay that is nothing but this union so there are four arguments okay. so here this is a union okay so this is a union that is fourth argument is a union which is used for setting different values so that is for setting the semaphore's value and for setting uh, uh, star buffer which is used for this command okay so this is ip stack Okay, so this is a buffer that is used for this command. I'll tell you this command. Okay, then next we have this array pointer, which is used by this okay, this command get all. Okay, so so these are the union. This is a union with the different members, which is used along with this the third argument that is command argument. Okay, so these two are interlinked. Okay. So I will we'll start discussing about the current argument. So current argument, uh, I mean command argument. Okay, command argument can have one of the following ten. Okay, here we have already how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one more is there. There are altogether ten commands. Okay, we have ten commands to be performed, and this on the set of specified by the uh, semaphorous ID. So once the semaphore's ID is done, we can perform this ten commands, or we can tell we can perform this ten operations. Okay, the five commands that refers to one particular semaphore's value. Okay, use the semaphore's number to specify one member of the set. Okay, so here. So this is semaphorous number. Okay. So this is semaphorous can create how many? It can create different ten semaphorous. Okay. So how many numbers we can have? Here we can have maximum zero to ten. Okay. Zero to ten means zero to nine. Okay. So zero to nine, each one will be having their own semaphorous number. So this is having zero, one, two, three, four, so on. The last one will be having number. Nine. Okay, so that is the semaphore's number. Okay, so this is the command number. Okay. So here the value of semaphore's number can be. So this semaphore's number can be between zero to number of semaphore's minus one. Okay. So number of semaphore's it differs. Okay. So this semaphore's can you can have. Uh, Like this, there are nine, ten semaphores. Okay, so this ten types of semaphores can, like this, we can create uh, five or six or depending on your requirements. Okay, so here, let us start discussing this semaphores uh, commands. Okay, so first we will discuss this first one. So first we'll discuss IPC stat. So this we'll discuss first IPC stat. So IPC stat it is used for fetching the semaphore's DS structure of the set and storing it in the structure pointed by the argument that is this buffer. Okay. So this is a buffer. So why it is used? This command is used for setting okay this structure. That is semaphore's ID dot DS. Okay. So fetching all these values. If you want to fetch all these values, okay, we can make use of this first command. Okay, this is the first command we are going to discuss. That and where it will be copied? It will be copied to the this particular structure which is pointed by the buffer. So copy the member of semaphore's DS structure of the semaphore set to this sem ID. Into this argument, uh, that is buffer. Okay, so it is used to fetch all these values, permission or 
number of semaphores, point uh, to the first semaphores, uh, different times, everything can be set can be fetched by using this uh, first command. Okay, sometimes you may need to we may require to get the information about the semaphores, right? So in that case, we can make use of this. So, so next one is second one is this we are going to discuss IPC set. So this is used to set the following three fields of the specter pointed by the argument buffer in the specter associated with the set. So here we are used to the set is used for setting the permission. Okay. So we said that we are having this permission here, right? M underscore permission. So what are the permission values you can set? So here we can set three types of permission by using this second IPC set command. So what are the three permissions? So here we can set the three permission. So first one is uh, semaphores user ID. Okay, effect user ID. And next one is group ID, semaphores group ID. So we can set this. And the last one is mode. Okay, user ID, group ID and mode. So these three things can be set by using this second command that is IPC set. Okay. So again to set these three things you need super user privilege. Okay. Third one we are going to discuss is this. Okay, IPC RMID. So this is a command that is used to remove the semaphores set from the system. So this R stands for removing the semaphores set. Okay, if you want to delete the semaphores, okay, we can use this, which is identified by this semaphores ID. So every semaphores will be having unique semaphores ID. Using this semaphores ID, you can delete the semaphores okay, from the system. And the next one we are going to discuss is fourth one is get value. So get value returns the value of the specified semaphores element. Okay, returns the value of the semaphores value of the member semaphores number. Okay, so any semaphores value you can get. Return the value of the specified semaphores element. So we said that semaphores will be having different set of values. So we can get the different values by using this. Next one is set value. That is the fifth one, set value. So this is to return or get the value. This is used for setting the values of the semaphores. Okay. So this is used for setting the values. Okay. That is by using this array. Okay. Using this array. Okay, we can get or set the values of the semaphores. So to specify the values, we are using this. Okay. So this is number, uh, yeah. Next one is the sixth one we are going to discuss is get the PID. So get the PID is returns a process ID of the last process to manipulate the elements. Okay, so here it returns the process ID. Okay, which is the last process which has used this semaphores or modified the values of the semaphores. Okay. So that is get the PID. Next one is, seventh one is this one, get, get N, C, N, T. Okay, so this returns the value, number of process waiting for the element to increment. Okay. So returns the value of number of process. Okay. So how many process is waiting for to use a particular semaphores? Okay. And the next eighth one, we will discuss this eighth one. So get Z C N T L. So it returns the number of uh, process waiting for the element to uh, become zero. So here uh, we said that the process can be incremented with the value okay or it can be decremented with the value or sometimes it also will become zero when it has uh, so at the point it when it becomes zero it will go to the sleep state okay so number of process is waiting to go for the sleep state okay so how many process is waiting to become zero okay 
so it doesn't want to use any resource further it doesn't want to use any resource how many process we are having okay in the set form not using any resource okay they are done with all the work so how many process are we are having in the system which do, which don't want to use any resource okay so that is the next one okay so this z indicates the zero and and there is one more get the value and set the value so set the value of the semaphores and this is to uh, set the value of the semaphores elements okay, i hope you are done with all these commands okay so give one line explanation of each of these commands so this is about the command argument okay so command argument and this union is connected and this command argument can be used to, to fetch or set different values or to get or set the permissions okay. so the next function we are going to discuss is sem op so semaphores op so automatically performs array of operations on a particular semaphores set okay array of operations so here this is the uh, prototype okay so here we need uh, semaphores id we are having uh, a array okay which is of type a structure okay sem buff okay Uh, then we are having size p n o p s. Okay, there are three arguments. So this is the structure. Okay, this is the ID. This is the semaphore structure. Okay, and here structure is uh, structure is of type uh, array. Okay, so array semaphore o p array is a pointer to the array of semaphore operation. Okay, so this is an array of semaphores operation is a pointer okay. next we have n ops n ops specifies number of operation in the array okay. how many types of operation or a number of elements in the array okay and here in the structure what and all we are having semaphores number okay so numbers in the set can range from 0 1 to number of semaphores minus 1 okay so this can have the value between 0 to number of semaphores minus 1 then sem op is nothing but the operation so which can take the value positive negative or zero next the semaphores flag which can take two values either this or this we we'll discuss later about this okay uh, and here so as we said that semaphores value can be positive okay uh, if it is positive then it corresponds to the returning of the resource by the process okay the value of semaphores op is added to the semaphores value okay suppose if the value is Okay, so positive means it will give you the information about the resources. Okay, what are the what are, what are the different resources or uh, the process can use? So it will give you the information about the resources that can be used by the process okay, for communication. Negative means okay. Suppose if it is negative, this means we want to obtain resources that the semaphores control. So this negative means. the resources are not ready okay so resources are not ready waiting for the resource okay we are waiting for the resource to obtain the resource okay. so if the value semaphores value is greater than or equal to the absolute value of semaphores op okay 
the absolute value is subtracted from the semaphorous value. And suppose if the value is zero, suppose if the value is zero, this means that we want to wait until the semaphorous value becomes zero. Okay. So this means zero is nothing but uh, we cannot we we cannot allot any resources. Okay. So here it is allotted with the resource. It is ready to allot the resource. Here uh, it is allotted with the resource. Okay. Here it is allotted with the resource. Okay. If it is positive. Okay. Here means it can allot the resource, but it is waiting for the resource. Okay, but zero means what? Uh, we cannot allot any resource. Okay, but we can allot the resource only if the semaphorous value becomes zero. Only if it is going for the, it is waiting for the sleep. Zero means what? It is in the sleep state. Okay, uh, yeah, semaphorous is in the sleep state. If the semaphorous value is currently zero, the function returns immediately. Okay. So this is in the sleep state. If the if the semaphorous is in the sleep state, then it will be having the value zero. Okay. So there are two types of flag. That is no wait and undo. Okay. No wait is specified, and no wait is a flag which is returned when there is any error. Okay. So we said that uh, when we are waiting for the Resource okay. Sometimes it may return with this flag no wait. So no wait means uh, it cannot be allotted with any resources. Okay. So similarly we have semaphorous undo. So this is one one more flag. Okay. To undo any operations. So here. So these are the things. Okay, about the semaphorus. So in the semaphorus, we discussed a basic thing of semaphorus. Two types of semaphorus. So what are the different types of semaphorus? Then we discuss different structures in semaphorus and three types of function. One is to create the semaphorus. Next, for uh, various operations and for array of operations. Okay, three types of functions. Okay, so this is the second type of interprocess. Communication. So, next one is shared memory. Shared memory we will discuss in the next class. 